Hi, Sam. Lieutenant Guthrie, Inspector Grab. Did you want to see us? Yeah, that's right. I couldn't get down to your office. Appreciate you coming out here. It's about a... about a murder. Who's been killed, Sam? Well, it hasn't happened yet. Who's going to be killed? I am. Francisco, the makers of King Size Viceroy, the cigarette with 20,000 filters in every tip, twice as many as the other two leading filter brands for that smoother taste present the lineup. At long last, there's a smoother taste in smoking. It's the Viceroy taste. Smoother, 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 Viceroy. Smoother taste, cause Viceroy has twice as many filters as the other two leading filter cigarettes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bill Elliott. Those sailors know they're smoking. Viceroy is the cigarette so smooth it's changed the smoking habits of the nation. It's changed millions to the good, smooth tobacco taste that only Viceroy's 20,000 filters can deliver. And that's twice as many filters in every Viceroy tip as the other two largest selling filter brands. That's why Viceroy's taste is never, never rough. It's smoother, by far. A smoother taste, cause Viceroy has twice as many filters as the other two leading filter cigarettes. Smoke smoother, Viceroy. You want to give us the whole story from the beginning, Horton? You say you're going to be killed, Sam. Who's going to do the job and why? Well, it goes back 15 years. Well, Matt and I sent you to trial 15 years ago. That's right. That's why I'd only tell you to. You fellas know me. After all, you got me this job eight years ago when I got out of prison, remember? I know, and you made good at it, too. And you were both at my wedding six years ago when Meyer and I were married. And then four years ago, little Sammy's christening. Well, I guess I've had it. Well, you're not dead yet, Sam. Someone after you from the old days? I turned state's evidence against the old Maisland gang. You remember that? Well, somebody else didn't forget either. Who didn't forget? I don't know. All I know is I'm slated for a rub out. Where'd you get the tip, Sam? Well, Meyer's been noticing the house being watched. She was kind of afraid that maybe some of the old mob was after me, so... Well, I called Cleveland last night and talked to Charlie Harris. A guy I knew in the old days. What did Charlie Harris say? Well, only that he'd heard a rumble that I was fingered. It was a torpedo on the way to handle the job. Did he say when this gunman was due to arrive? Look, fellas, I'm not so much scared for myself. It's Meyer and the kid. He might kill them, too. Now, we sent Sammy Jr. down to Fresno to be with his grandparents, but Myra won't leave. She says she's my wife and she's staying. She says it's uh, part of her contract. This is what the deal I had on the Maisland gang, then. That outfit's been broken up for years. Are you sure Warden's not just building up to a panic for nothing? He's not the type to panic. I don't think there's anything in this file that'll help us. It's too dated. Well, better send a teletype to Cleveland, Fred. See what recent information they have on former members of the Maisland gang, particularly those that might have threatened Sam Warden, might show up on their makes or court records. You want me to check the source of the Warden tip while I'm at it? Yeah, see what they've got on Charles Harris, too. Right. <laughs> Good 
morning, Matt. Morning, Matt. Got an answer back on a Cleveland teletype. Charles Harris is an old-time hoodlum and a former member of the Maislin gang. Had a long record years ago. Last conviction was for income tax evasion. Is there anything recent on the rest of the Maislin gang? Yeah, a man named Justin Garner. Long record, no conviction in the last few years. Used to be a professional killer. There's his description. Cleveland says he hopped a plane for the coast last night. Yes. Yeah. The tower radioed us to hold our passengers. May I see your passenger list, please? Certainly, sir. There's no Garner aboard, Ben. The short man, round face, glasses. That would be Mr. Jones. May I ask Mr. Jones to step down here, please? Sir. Jones, huh? Not very original, is he? For police officers, you Justin Garner? Sorry, my name's Jones. Well, we think you look like Justin Garner. I'd like to talk about it for a while. Very well. We'll talk. Downtown at the Hall of Justice. I'll get your baggage. Okay. Why are you traveling under an alias? I always travel in Tagnito. What are you doing here in San Francisco? Business. What kind of business? Public relations. Quite a bit different from your past business, isn't it? I don't know what you mean, Inspector. Garner, weren't you picked up as a suspect in a shooting in 53? Yes, but I wouldn't call that little incident trouble. After all, I was released in 72 hours. But lack of evidence. This victim you were suspected of shooting in 53, wasn't he an ex-member of the Maislin gang? I wouldn't know. And didn't you once know him? When? When you were in the Maislin gang? I was never in any gang. What company are you working for? Various Eastern interests. Name some. Oh, I'm sorry. I consider information relative to my clients to be of a confidential nature. That routine hasn't changed since your past profession. You learned it in college? Yes, as a matter of fact. What college? Ohio State Penitentiary. I was a librarian there. I did a lot of reading. Attend any other colleges? Oh, my, several. Let me see, there was uh, Sing Sing, McNeil Island, Jacktown. Oh, an excellent school, Jacktown. <laughs> I learned how to launder shirts there. Nothing in the grip. Ever been hired to execute anyone? No. Did you shoot that man in 53? Oh, no, I abhor guns. Well, oh, do you? Well, Garner, you've had four felony convictions, each one involving a shooting, and a total of almost 20 years in prison. That's why I abhor guns. Any luck? No, he's a cool customer, Fred. You want to hold him? No. There's no gun on him, nothing else incriminating. Cleveland police been watching him ever since he got out of prison the last time. Been wanted anywhere, why, they'd have held him. Figures. We'll keep him under 24-hour surveillance, though. 
We found a public locker receipt for a key deposit in Garner's bag. Number 2714 Harbor Locker Club. The key wasn't in Garner, though. You want to check the locker? Yeah. Anything from the stakeout on Wharton's home? They called in a while ago. It's all clear. Mm -hmm. Well, let's hope it stays that way. I was never a member of this Maislin gang you speak of. Of course, in the past, I may have done business with parties who were in such an association, but I can't really recall. We're going to be staying in town here, Garner. I really don't know. I haven't had a chance to register anywhere but here. All right, you can go. Lieutenant Guthrie. Where? Be right there. 419 at Scott and Vallejo. Sam Wharton's car was bombed and his wife was in it. At long last, there's a smoother taste in smoking. It's the Viceroy taste. Smoother, 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 Viceroy. Smoother taste, cause Viceroy has twice as many filters as the other two leading filter cigarettes. Yes, this is the answer to America's question. Which cigarette gives me the smoothest taste? Viceroy, smoother than any other cigarette. And this is the reason. Only Viceroy has 20,000 filters, made from pure cellulose, soft, snow white, natural. That's twice as many filters in every Viceroy tip as the other two largest selling filter brands. The result, the Viceroy taste is never, never rough. It's the smoother taste in smoking. A smoother taste, cause Viceroy has twice as many filters as the other two leading filter cigarettes. Smoke smoother, Viceroy. How is she? Pretty bad, man. Better take a look around. Might be some witnesses. Right. Not much left here for the lab boys to go on. A couple of pieces of wood down there. It's like a homemade contraption. Possibly a time mechanism of some kind. Gotta call Sam Wharton. meant for me. She got it. Look, fella, she's gonna be all right. These doctors in emergency work wonders these days. Yeah. You can put a jigsaw puzzle together. But it's not like the original painting. Where was Myra going? Well, today's payday. She always picks me up. We stop by a local brew hall, toast the paycheck. Sort of a celebration we had. Well, how is it you weren't in the car then, Sam? I had to work late today. Today's the day they picked a bomb me. You told Myron not to pick you up. Yeah, I called her on the phone, told her I had to work late. She said she'd get some food for dinner, and... Well, the next thing I knew, I had this call about her from you. Did she say she was making any other stops except to pick up food for dinner? No. All except that uh, she and Doreen generally have a long lunch. It's been a routine for years, you know, like picking me up. Doreen who? Doreen Gallagher. She's Myra's oldest friend. As a matter of fact, she knew her long before I did. Where did Doreen live? Out near us, 3907 Rivera. So Myra and Doreen had lunch together today? That's right, Lieutenant. Where? They always eat at the same place, Giraldi's, number nine, Fisherman's Wharf. How long do they stay there usually? Well, when I talked to Myra on the phone, she said she'd gotten there about 2 o'clock. I suppose a couple hours. Then I guess she left. Anything else you can tell us, Sam? No. My wife bombed. My car wrecked. You gotta get the rat who did it. You gotta help me. You're my friends. 
Well, even if we weren't your friends, we'd help you, Sam. It's our job. Myra left home to have lunch with Doreen Gallagher shortly after 1 o'clock, and they made no stops. That means the bomb must have been planted while they were having lunch. Yeah, but our number one suspect, Justin Garner, is a gunman. Not a nitro man, Ben. Could have made the arrangements beforehand. So far, we haven't found one single common denominator to tie the whole thing together. Someone's going to an awful lot of trouble to get the Whartons. The Whartons? You mean both of them? It could be. Anyone wanting to get Sam Wharton could pick a better time than when his wife was known to use the car. Yeah, that figures. Justin Garner's movements this afternoon. Have any trouble staying with him? He's pretty sharp. When he walked out of the hall of justice, he knew we were on him. Doubled back and forth, walking a few blocks. I guess he figured we lost him. Where'd he go? Checked in at a hotel. He didn't stay very long. He visited somebody. It's all there in my notes. 12.32, suspect took cab from hotel, arrived at destination at 12.40, stayed with party till 107. Apartment at 3907 Rivera, residence of Doreen Gallagher. from Cleveland this time. Remember that Ramsey investment hole up about seven years ago? Yeah. Well, they never did recover those negotiable securities. No, and they never turned up either. But it looks like that Ramsey job could be the common denominator we've been looking for, Ben. How do you figure? Well, take a look at this teletype. Myra Horton's from Cleveland. She's mentioned in connection with the investigation of that Ramsey holdup. Held on suspicion of being implicated, released for lack of evidence. Doreen Gallagher worked for Ramsey, too. After the holdup and the investigation, she and Myra left Cleveland at the same time. Well, their backgrounds tie them both together, all right. Yeah, Doreen Gallagher again. That's why I wanted to wait till we had more information on her. Now let's go and have a talk with her. <laughs> What are you selling? Police. Never did buy those things. You Doreen Gallagher? Afraid so. What's the pitch? I'm Inspector Gravis, Lieutenant Guthrie. Glad to meet you. I'd like to ask you some questions. About what? Mm, just routine. I know all about your routines. The last one I got mixed up with was a routine sobriety. That cost me a 502. Come on. Okay, what's on your mind? A man named Justin Garner, do you know him? No, never heard of him. How about a Myra Horton? Sure, known her for years. Where'd you know her? Back east. Where in the east? Detroit. You sure of that? Maybe it was Cleveland. And how did you meet her? I forget. Be better all around if you answer the lieutenant's questions, Miss Gallagher. Myra and I once worked together. Where? Cleveland. For whom? I don't remember. For whom? Ramsey Investment. You worked for the Ramsey Investment Company very long, Miss Gallagher? No. Why do you ask? Why are you asking me these questions? Would you open this first, please? The contents on the table. Public locker key, number 2714, Harbor Locker Club. Where did you get this, Doreen? Why, well, I must have... 
I'm not sure where I got it. Are you sure you don't know a man named Justin Garner? I already said I didn't. Has he ever visited you here? No, why would he do that? Do you want to tell us the whole story or do you want to keep on lying? I don't know what you're talking about. We think you don't. Well, get dressed and come on down to the Hall of Justice and we'll find out who's right. <laughs> Hey, Doreen, you want to tell us about Justin Garner now? Who's he? Man who visited you in your apartment. Why did he visit you? Nobody visited me yesterday. That's not what our men who were following Justin Garner say. What do you know about the Wharton car being bombed? Nothing. Were you held on suspicion of being implicated in the Ramsey investment holdup in Cleveland seven years ago? You're a cop. You know that answer. Why ask me? Was Myra Wharton implicated? I want a lawyer. Okay. Do you mind if we open this locker 2714? All right. If I tell the story, will it go easier on me? Well, you'll know anyway when you open that locker. The negotiable bonds from the Ramsey investment job are in there. Mara and I were involved, all right. Mara and I made sure Charlie took the right bonds. Charlie who? Charlie Harris in Cleveland. He's my husband. Charlie had an airtight alibi, so he was clear. Charlie mailed the bonds to general delivery here. Mara and I came west, picked up the bonds, and hid them in my apartment. I kept them there for six years. Charlie didn't want to touch them until he was sure they were safe. Why was Myra bombed? About a month ago, she got in a panic, said I had to get rid of them. That's when I put the bonds in the harbor locker. I called Charlie. Charlie said there was only one thing to do. What was that? Kill Mara. Who arranged it? Justin Garner. And he set the bomb in the Wharton car? When? Well, Garner came to town the first time last week. He asked about Mara's habits, where she went, and so on. I told him that she and I always had a long lunch every Thursday afternoon. And Garner arranged for the bomb on his first trip here last week? Garner called some man from my apartment. He gave him the information, address, and kind of car. He told the man to plant the bomb and time it to go off yesterday afternoon at 5 o'clock. Garner told me to be sure to be out of that car by a quarter to 5. What's the name of the man who planted the bomb? <sighs> Paul Parkins. He's an ex-con. And after he made the arrangements with Parkins, Garner left town, huh? That's right. But he flew back again to make sure everything went as planned and to get that locker key from me. I wouldn't give him the key. He searched my apartment and roughed me up a little. But he never found it. Doreen, why didn't you give him the key? I don't know. I didn't trust him. That's why I left Myra even earlier than I told Garner. I was scared of Garner, I guess. You had good reason to be. The bomb went off at 4.30. Bye. Well, Doreen Gallagher broke, Fred. Better pick up Paul Parkins and Justin Garner, then book the Gallagher woman. And wire Cleveland to pick up Charles Harris. Right. Oh, that was Sam Wharton on the phone, Ben. He wants to see you. That right leg of hers is going to take an awful long time to heal, though. Still pretty lucky, I guess. What do you want to see us about, Sam? Well, this morning in the hospital, she told me all about that Ramsey investment job. How she'd kept it hidden from me for years, how she lived with it. 
lived with it on her conscience. You know, it's funny. Me calling my old buddy Harris when he was the one who instigated the whole thing. There was only one thing wrong with that tip that Harris gave you. Yeah. I heard Doreen and Myra talking about this over a month ago. I heard Myra telling Doreen how miserable she'd been for seven years living with that on her conscience. Harris doing that to my wife. I never told him. You know, his whole future was wrapped up in those stolen bonds. I wanted it to be a big surprise. Is that why the bonds were in that public locker? Yeah. I got the key out of Doreen's purse. Down opened up the locker and... Well, I got the key back in her purse. She never knew it was gone. And what did you do with the bonds? They burned them. You know what this means? Yeah. Let's go. Before continuing with tonight's case, here's a word from next week's sponsor. From Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, where windows look out on the bay, a real-life report of the cheer window test. Mrs. James Reed of South Duluth Avenue proved that blue cheer washes clothes so white you can see the difference. Mrs. Reed was making beds the first time she'd washed her sheets with cheer. In the critical light from her window, she saw amazing new whiteness. On pillowcases, too, and on hard to whiten things like nylon, a wonderful difference, never possible before cheer. An actual cheer window test. And here's why it works. Only blue cheer has the blue magic whitener. More than a bluing, it's a new better whitener for all your wash. Try cheer, the modern detergent for modern automatics. Cheer has the active kind of suds recommended by the leading makers of automatic washers and preferred by eight out of 10 women who own agitator automatics. And only Blue Cheer's active suds have that Blue Magic Whitener. Well, Garner, Parkins, and the Gallagher woman are booked, Ben. They signed their statements? Mm-hmm. It's too bad about Sam Wharton being charged accessory after the fact. Yeah, but he did burn the bonds. Didn't exactly have a criminal motive, either. I know, but accessory after the fact. You think a guy's going straight, a wife, a young son, and... It's too bad. Just protecting his wife. Lieutenant Guthrie. Be right there. 918 at Union and Powell. <laughs> story of the lineup was brought to you from San Francisco by the makers of King Size Viceroy, the cigarette with 20,000 filters in every tip, twice as many as the other two leading filter brands for that smoother taste. The lineup is produced by Jaime Del Valle with the cooperation of the San Francisco Police Department. We are grateful to Chief of Police Frank Ahern and the men in his organization who have contributed their time and effort to make this program possible.